Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Windward, and in the game Windward, you'll be taking part as Sky Captains on a ship aboard near the planet Celsus, and your objective is to gain the most notoriety possible. And how do you do that? Well, you need to hunt Crusters. Crusters are basically like whales, but they fly in the sky, and there's strong ones, and there's weaker ones, and of course you want to gather the ones that are the least aggressive, making them easier to capture, but there's a lot more vicious ones around, so you will have to compete against other sky captains looking to find the Grey Cresters as easily as possible, or if you want, you can just go ahead and man your crew as well as all of your uh, components, your cannons and all that good stuff, and fight the red ones, taking them down and bringing them back to port, and then selling them for gas, which can then turn into notoriety. You'll also gain notoriety from destroying cresters and gathering certain resources and whatnot. And if you play with the advanced variant of the game, there'll be achievements that you can acquire additional notoriety as well. Once one player gets to 15 notoriety, there's one more round of play. And whoever has the most notoriety at the end of that round is going to be the winner of the game, Windward. The game is about two to four players with a solo variant. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half and is for ages 13 and up. Let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you what's in the game and then how to play. So here we have the game Windward, and it's set up for up to four players, and I went ahead and put everything in its place. But let's go ahead and talk about everything first. As you can see, there's going to be your player boards or crew boards in which you're going to have your ships and your boats as well as your crew, and you'll start with two of them. Uh, you're also going to get a morale tracker, and it'll be at one, and then your boats movement, which starts at zero, but you'll increase them as you do certain actions. On the far right-hand side of your ship board or port board, character board, uh, you're going to have the at sky actions and then you're going to also have the at port actions. Those are basically going to allow you to do certain things based on where your ship is located on this planet here. Uh, you're also going to have this port board, which is the board in which whenever your player's uh, ship or your ship is in the middle here, that's actually going to take it back to your uh, board over here, and which means you can go ahead and access stuff like this. This is the morale tracker. You're going to put one of your tokens for each of the colors uh, on the number one space. And then it's going to move all the way to 15. When that happens, that will trigger the end of the game, in which case everybody gets a turn other than the player who triggered the spot. These are the crew members you can acquire, and you can acquire one of each, but they're double-sided. Uh, and so if you pick Gas Worker, you won't be able to pick the Veteran. Uh, but you'll also get Supply Cards. There's a deck of Supply Cards. You'll shuffle them up and deal them based on player turn order. The first player getting two cards, the second getting three, uh, the third getting four, and then five, five being your maximum hand size. After that, you'll deal out cards cards face up in three different piles here and if at any point in time any of these decks ever runs out you're simply going to take the discarded cards shuffle them up and deal them up once again in the space in the pile that didn't have any cards previously these are achievements for the advanced version of the game we're going to shuffle these up and deal out two of them and these will gain you notoriety if you achieve these you'll be placing a marker indicating that you got that thing once and you can only get it once for each player uh, these over here are cannon tokens these are fuel tokens and these are plus two tokens which will help you in battle after losing a battle against either a red or a gray quester or if you choose to fight another player these are your battle die this is your wind die and then you have two different types of teeth you have the red crester teeth and then you have the gray crester teeth these things will be worth fuel and notoriety when you process them during the time in which you are at sky with your ship uh, this is the player board here which as you can see is modular so you can go ahead and shift them around to make different types of uh different structures of the planet which will have different things on them let's talk about the different planet stuff so first of all these are these rocks things here which you can't go on you have the storm space over here uh you're going to have the red crester spaces which are where you're going to start each red crester to begin the game there should be a total of six of them for each of the different boards and then you're going to roll the die Based on, there's going to be a flag as well as an actual miniature building here, which I'm just missing. But uh, it's going to uh, signify which one of these spaces is what, as far as number goes, as well as the wind for this specific flag here. We roll the die, and then whenever number you get one through six is where you place your gray crester. It's always going to be one. Um, the number of players minus one. So in a two-player game, you get one of them, and then in a three-player game, you would get two of them, and you roll them, and they'd go randomly based on the locations they're presented at. Additionally. You're going to take the fuel and place two fuel on each of these little fuel spaces here, which will gather, uh, which you can gather, which will give you notoriety and other good things. 
and you just put them all the way around the board basically you'll have your hand of cards you're gonna have your entire player board and that's pretty much it as far as what you're gonna hit in the game including of course the box and the rule book okay let's go down i'll show you a basically turn of play give you an idea of how the actions work whether you're uh, out in the planet or whether you're at port trying to gather notoriety buying stuff with gas or using your actions so I went ahead and set up Windward for two players here, and as you can see, the green player will be the first player with two supply cards, and the yellow player will be the second player with three supply cards. And of course, if you had three and four, we just give them each one additional supply card for each space they are away. Uh, so we're ready to pretty, pretty much begin. We have our ship, which is currently at port. Both of them would be at port. And then we have our boats in the cargo hold because your ships will be dropping them down on the board here. You have the bottom uh, left here, your ship strength, your boat strength, the gray uh, crester strength, which is one, which are these guys here, and the red ones, which are five. Strength is based on the number of die you'll be rolling when you attempt to attack or when you get attacked in the game. Now, basically what you're going to be able to do is a couple different actions. You can move your ships and or your boats. You can spend gas, which will be in this area here, which are these guys here, so that you can use these abilities here. And you'll only be able to do that when your ship is at port. Uh, you could also give orders, which are you basically ordering your crew, crewmen around, depending on where you're at. If you're at port, you can do any of these four orders here, whether it be giving yourself plus one morale, whether it be hiring a crew member, which will allow you to go through this stack here and place one down based on which space they go on. And once that space is filled, that's it. You can't use the opposite side. Uh, you could also choose to fill one cannon, which is simply just taking a cannon and placing it in a space. And you're limited by cannons and gas based on these little extra spaces here. And some of the crew members will actually give you bonuses, like this gas worker here is going to allow you to get two more gas. Pretty useful if you ask me. Uh, but you'll be placing them in there. Uh, another action you could simply do is you can draw up to five supply cards. The way you draw, draw cards is choosing from these three stacks that are face up and putting them in your hand and then just cutting down to your maximum hand size, which is normally five, but there are crew members who will actually give you more. So what does he want to do? Well, first of all, he only has two cards, so he probably wants to go ahead and take supply cards. So he'll take, place one of his crewmen there, and then he can go ahead and take any of these cards up to five here. Maybe he'll take this one, and then this one, and this one. Hmm, this one and this one. So he's got his five cards plus two more. He'll get rid of two cards he doesn't want. So maybe he'll get rid of uh, these guys here. He doesn't want these guys. So you put them aside. And that will be his hands hand for the turn. He'll be able to use these cards when he needs to. Uh, he can also then go ahead and place one of these guys somewhere else out here if he wants. And maybe he'll go over here for morale, putting him up one. Morale is basically strength, health, which will allow you to stay alive. Your boat won't have to go back to the port. So having morale is going to be useful because based on how much you take damage is how far, how much down this track you're going to go. And if you go to zero, you're going to drop your stuff and you're going to have to go back to the port. Uh, you can also then choose to move out of here. If you don't and you end your turn on this space here in the port area, you'll actually gain additional morale, which could be useful in your first turn if you want to do that but if you didn't you can actually take your boat out and you can move uh, now the one thing you want to say about this before we do all that is just before you start your turn and you do all these actions here you're going to take the wind die wherever that die may be here he is and you're going to roll and we're just going to go ahead that's a six and we're going to go ahead and say that this space here this area here is a one so one two three four five and six then we're going to rotate this to show how the wind is going and wind is going to manipulate how you move in this game if you're going towards the wind then it's free movement you can never move against the wind and anywhere else is going to cost you one your ship has a space of four movement speed but that can increase with crewmen and so if you want you can go ahead and utilize this now i would because specifically that's like gray crestors out there and this is going to help us get there faster so that is a one, because it costs one to move. And then you can also deal with these red guys, but they're a little more difficult. So I could go two and three, because I'm going slightly against the wind. And then these are all free movements, because they're towards the wind. And then for my fourth space, I can try and go onto that space. I'm going to try and capture that guy there. Um, but basically, I cannot deal with him with this specific ship. It has to be with a boat. So I can actually go ahead and drop a boat here. And if I drop a boat, it's going to cost me an action. So if I had, if I didn't actually use the plus one morale, I'll go ahead and say I didn't just to show you, I could drop this boat off. And the boat can occupy the same space as another thing that is in the same uh, uh, the same height. So this is the same height. This one could deal with these red guys here. The boats can deal with these red guys, though, okay? So then I could choose to try and attempt to uh, fight. Now, in general, when you drop a ship off, you're also going to have to move it. And it has no base movement speed. So let's go ahead and pretend like I didn't even use that action either. If I wanted to, I could drop a boat, which there's two options to do so. 
which will let me do that. And then I can add boat speed. So I can place one of these guys here, increasing my boat speed to three. And then anytime I want during my turn, I can go ahead and move my boats. And every time I do, I'm going to lose a speed. So you can save these from round to round. That basically allows you to utilize these boats to get these gray cresters here. The other options are ship speed plus one, which will give you from four to five. And the last one over here is called processing your cresters, which you'll need to do before you get back to port. If you process a cruster, you're going to be processing its teeth for notoriety. And you'll also be getting gas based on your morale. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you a fight with this. It's pretty simple. You look at the strength of your boat, which is one, and then you look at the strength of the Grey Cresters, which is one as well. Your opponent will roll this, and you will roll this. And so before that happens, you can choose if you want. If you have any cannons, you can spend these cannons to give you additional die, for one for each. Uh, then after that, your, your defender would choose, but in this case, it's a Crestor, so you didn't go ahead and roll. Bam. This is a three. This is a one. That means this has been beaten. If it was an opponent, then basically the attacker would have a chance to play uh, additional plus twos to, uh, or, or additional uh, cards to try and increase their amount, and then the defender would have that option as well, and then it would resolve based on whoever has the highest. But it's a Crestor, so no cards are needed and uh, there's also no plus twos needed as well. So in this case, the Crestor would go and fall over on its back, and now your boat is carrying it. So it can go one, and it can actually go ahead and return back to the ship here. And ships can actually go ahead and pick up uh, boats for free, and it would just take it back here along with the Crestor. If I had an extra action or a card that gave me an extra action, which I don't think I do, unfortunately, but if I did, I would then be able to process that Crestor. Now, in this case, I can't. But if I did, I w and I did have the option to, I would then go ahead and uh, take this guy and he would go back. Additionally, whenever a, cre a gray Crestor gets removed from the board, you're simply going to roll the die. And then based on the number, one, two, three, four, five, you're going to place a new Crestor on the spawning space. If it was a red one, the player who defeated it would place that red Crestor uh, place a new red crestor anywhere on the board that he destroyed the crestor at. So he, if this one was destroyed, it would go into the ship, and then this one would come out and he'd place it anywhere he wants here. Uh, after that, then you are basically get your... Uh, so you got his, uh, he's got the gray crestor in here. If he could process it, he would remove this. He would gain a gray crestor tooth, as well as he would gain fuel based on uh, morale. In this case, it would just be one. He'd take that and put that in there. And in which case, he might want to try and go back. Now, remember, you can't go back to the wind. So other interesting things in this game you could do is, if he had the movement, he could actually go around here. And these little areas here will let you go from one side of the board to the other side of the board. And in addition from that, if you go on these spaces here, you could actually move anywhere on these, any, any of the other spaces as well for a movement. So kind of this little teleportation spot. And when you run out of your actions or your ability to do move orders and the ability to move with your ship and or boats, you're basically done unless there's any cards you want to specifically play. And you're just going to be going back and forth trying to gather either red cresters and or the gray ones. Now, at the end of your turn, based on where you are, the red crester in your area is going to move three spaces towards you. And if he gets to you or tries to hit in your, your space, you have to fight him. And dealing with red crusters is nasty because they have five strength. And in which case, if they dropped your morale down, because let's just say that the red crester rolled, oh, I don't know, because he's going to have five dice. That, and then you only were able to roll this. That's going to be four versus four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be a difference of six, which would mean you'd lose up to six morale if you didn't have any cards and whatnot. And if that happened, if you dropped down to zero, you would go back to one, your ship would return here, you'd drop off half the things you had onto the space that was it was it was there so that anybody else can pick it up for free. The crester just kind of chills there, and you'd have to kind of start back. So you have to be careful with dealing with these red cresters as they move around the board. The next player would then get to go, they'd take their actions either on the port or out at sky. And if you ended your turn, the last interesting thing that I have to talk about is if you ended your turn on uh, on the uh, sky area, so if you're out here somewhere, you will have to either lose one supply card or one morale. And be careful, if you have no cards and no morale, you could actually end up suffering severely. And then, if you manage to not <laughs> suffer for that, you would then have the Red Crestor move, like I had shown you, and finally you get one to notoriety. So being out here is going to score you a victory point, regardless of what you've done, as long as you're out here. But it's going to cost you, and eventually you'll have to go back to base. If you end up staying in base, so if I just did the, I'll just show you the, the yellow person's turn, I would have, okay, I'll hire a crew member, and then I'll fill a cannon, and then I'm going to rest in there, I'm going to stay there. Basically what happened with that is, he get his, these guys go over here, he get his cannon, he get his crew member, and then he would stay in the port here, which would give him morale for free. So that is kind of useful. Not only that, each player has their own unique 
bonuses on their boards so that every single player board is different than any other. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Now, there are a couple of things, like I said, you can't move in these spaces here. These are teleportation spaces. These let you go from one side of the board to the other. And if you land on these spaces here, the gas spaces, you can take these and put them in here and utilize them for this stuff. You can fill a cannon for one gas. You can hire a crew member for two. You can buy a crew a drink, which will give you one gas plus a morale, a notoriety, which will give you for one well, for two gas will give you one notoriety, and then three supply cards will give you one gas. Uh, the uh, for, sorry, three supply cards for one gas. These things here are achievements, and as you go throughout the game, if you're able to defeat two gray cresters in a single turn, you'll score four points, and that gets covered up. And there's only one left, so anybody can do this one here. Once those both get covered up, that's it. The other option for achievements are everybody can do it at least once. So for instance, moving 15 spaces in a single turn is going to score you three notoriety or victory points. And uh, once you've done that once, that's it. But everybody else has the op opportunity to do that as well. And don't forget always to make sure when it's your turn to always roll to move this wind around so it changes based on uh, the turn. And also that you can never move uh, away from the wind. You, know? you always want to move into the wind, which is very useful throughout the game. But anyway, that's the basic idea. When somebody's notoriety gets to 15, that's going to trigger the end game, in which case everybody else except for them is going to get an extra turn. And if uh, they manage to go surpass that player, they'll win the game. If not, that player will simply win. And of course, you can go past that uh, regardless. But once 15 hits, that's it. That's pretty much the idea for the game. Let's come up and I'll discuss it and we'll give you my review. So let's go ahead and talk about Windward and a couple caveats first. One of them is there are a lot of different cards in the game and they'll do different things for you. And I'll go ahead and read some of those off, like countermeasures will give you plus two hits while in a battle as a defender. Fuel gives you an additional ship speed, plus one correct crew morale when you have some rum, and rolling for new wind direction, which can be very useful because on your turn, when you start and you roll and you're not happy with it, that card is very, very useful. Additionally, player boards are going to be different. Everybody has their own unique player power, and it shows you with a different color. Like, for instance, this, this board here, the green player, is going to have to take five supply cards, which I showed you, but every other player, it's just going to be taking three. So you have to look at your board and see which one gives you what. The other player had plus five boat speed as opposed to plus three so just remember those little uh, that little thing there uh, additionally uh, the rules don't specify whether or not you can do these certain things I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the way it works I don't know if you can actually put a put your your boat onto a space with a gray crest and I think you can't because of how losing and how uh, being defeated and tying works basically you can't walk into a space unless that happens so you have to drop your ship outside of the area move or sorry your, your drop, put your ship outside next to them drop it drop your boat and then move your boat in and then you can move it back I'm pretty sure that's how it works additionally action cards there's cards that say plus one action like coffee here Coffee says you get plus one action. It doesn't say necessarily if you can use the same space that one of your ship members occupies, but I'm gonna guess that you can't do that. And you're simply, if you if you at port and you filled in the, the supply cards and the morale, you could then do either cannon or higher crew with an additional plus action. And I think those are pretty much it. I didn't have the little base for the wind, but I may do. I'm sure you guys are gonna have a, a much better this is a prototype obviously so everything here is prototype before what it looks like already it looks like there's a lot of love and care in this game i just didn't have a little fort thing that showed you the numbers on how it looks uh, the other thing too is when you're building the uh, planet you're going to be moving it around and you can basically kind of conform your own planet and do it randomly that's how i would suggest it but that way it will change the layout of the game each and every time making it just that little bit of difference as, as well as the player powers uh, that being said, that's pretty much all the caveats I got. So what do I think about the game Windward? Well, first of all, the theme of this game is awesome. It reminds me of that movie, uh, what's it called? Stardust, where you you got the, the sky captain and he's out there trying to harness lightning. But in this one, you're actually out there trying to hunt down uh, cresters, flying whales, basically, and trying to gather their stuff. And you can only bring one crester in at... Uh, you can never bring a crester into port, ever. You have to process them first, and you can only process once every turn. So if you have two, two, uh, one crestor and, and a tooth, and you've already processed this turn, you have to wait till the next turn to process. So you have to try and time everything perfectly, or as perfectly as you possibly can, obviously. Using those teeth to gather you your, um, <laughs> your notoriety is what you're going to need to do. That's the best way of doing it. And you think, or at least what I first thought was, you want to deal with these red cresters first. That's not necessarily the case. What you actually want to do is find the gray ones because the gray ones give you three notoriety when you cash them in and the red ones give you four. So 
you you definitely get more with red, but they're a lot more difficult to deal with, and sometimes you're going to lose to them. And gray, it's a lot more likely you can deal with them, but there's a lot less of them, and they're more sought after. Thusly making a two-player game a little less combative, and then a three and a four-player game gets definitely more combative. You can attack each other's uh, boats and whatnot, and you can steal from other players, you can send them back to port, trying to gather those gray cresters, so that's going to be the easiest thing. When I first played the game, the first time I played it two players, I played uh, where I stayed in port for a bit, and I gathered as much as I could, and then I went out and hunted all the red cresters, which works to a certain extent, but if the gray cresters are picked up quick enough, and you're smart about how you lay down your boats, because leaving boats in areas to gather those gray cresters and bring them back is going to definitely facilitate you. So you kind of have an option of how you want to do certain things, and how aggressive you want to be towards other players. I dig the theme. Quality components are really cool. I'm really excited to see what it looks like when it's fully done. Everything looks really nice and set up. Does it get a little mechanical? Is what somebody was asking me. It feels a little mechanical. I'm like, uh, sometimes I guess it can be because you kind of know what your turn is going to be for the most part. But there's a lot of things that throw wrenches into it. And people don't often think about the red crusters and how they move three spaces towards you at the end of every turn, making it so that you have to time your movement where you what you want to do pretty carefully. And if you don't, Things can change, and when things change, best laid plans are run amok. All the cards are very useful, and they are you're going to have to try and maneuver yourself to use the cards as best as you possibly can. So, for instance, running away from a crestor but making sure that it gets to you so that you can use countermeasures on it is a nice little tactic. Choosing between the workers, and you can only choose three, but there's six total, is really cool as well because you want more gas so you can get more uh, points at the end of the game, or do you want to do, do you deal with the marines, which will give you more likelihood of dealing with the cresters because they can be rather difficult to deal with and in fact losing to a gray one is always is always sad you're always like ah really i lost to a gray one i had two dice i rolled two ones and they roll a three ah but yeah i had a lot of fun with this game it's definitely more fun in my opinion with three and four players because that increases the amount of tension in the game increases what players are trying to do and how they deal with the gray cresters a little more in a two-player game it's more of a back and forth of who can get those gray cresters and who's able to hit a red one once in a while and pull them in and what trump cards players have and when they're going to use them and then three and four sparks even more shenanigans because now you're dealing with two other players or three other players that are after that same crestor or there's you know two or three crestors depending on the number of players right it's minus one so you're like oh I'm going to go for this one. Oh, he's going for this one. If I go for that one, it's harder to get because the wind's not my favorite. Well, if I could play this car, it might change the wind and it might not. Oh, no. And that was where all the strategy comes to mind. Now, there's very little luck in this game because you can kind of manipulate your own luck for the most part. But when your luck is against you, you definitely feel it, which is an interesting thing as well. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed this game. People who are going to like this game, people who like airship games, Ferdinand, I'm looking at you, Cardboard Stacker, he loves airship games. And anybody who likes the tactical movement, choosing to use action whether at port or whether at uh, out, out, in, out in the air is cool because you can do both as long as you move your ship in and out you have that option to do that which is unique I was like oh wow you can do that that was super cool and the fact that it's such a unique and riveting feel trying to go after these things it's like I guess people who don't like hunting animals may not be so much into this but for the most part I think pretty much everybody's gonna be on for that this is a medium game maybe me it's, it's, it's probably like light medium to medium because there is definitely decisions you have to make and definitely a lot of different actions you can choose to take and there can be some analysis paralysis players are going to be like oh what's this do what's that do i'm not too sure if i want to actually do this but after the first game or so you've pretty much got it down packed pretty easy to understand and that's pretty much it I, I don't think i have any other negative things to say about really i really enjoyed this one grant really enjoyed this one and then i had our four player game that was just crazy if you like ship-based tactical games with actions and selecting different things, you're going to dig Windward. Definitely take a look at it down below. I think it'll be on Kickstarter by the time I release it. So just, just, I'll be releasing it just slightly before Kickstarter. And that, it, the link will be in the description if you want. Windward. Fly high, my captains! Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this game, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Please share this video. Get us out there. Our views, it's getting harder. We got, we got, we, our YouTube algorithm is messing with me, and I think it'd be really, really useful for you if you enjoyed this game to not only help the creator, but also to help me to be able to put out more videos just like this, just for you guys. And uh, the only other thing I want to say about Windward is there's a couple rules, like I was saying before, that I just didn't understand, like the actions and whether you can put a, a certain thing. 
I, I'm for the most part just our rules didn't have it, but I'm sure in the Kickstarter it's gonna have that. Any questions you have, you can simply ask them. But I wasn't gonna fault the game for those specific little things, so that's a little too nitpicky for me. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. In about a week and a half to two weeks, we're gonna have a total site upgrade to make it look nice, and there'll be a little, a little bit more content there as well for you guys to take a look at. Every Wednesday, 7:30 p.m. PST is our live stream. We stream a bunch of games just like this one there, and you can watch us, and you can actually win some games as well we give away games live on stream all right guys that's all i got for this time as always i look forward to flying with you windward next time yeah